Hey, this is Pops, and I uh, thought we'd just hang out. I thought we would just uh, do a comic book talk. It's a little bit different than uh, I've been doing. I don't have a guest this week. A lot of stuff still going on uh, in the old personal life, but let's get to it. Uh, right away, I have this story. Uh, I was just kind of like tooling around because we came out of New York Comic Con, and I just felt like nothing knocks my socks off anymore. I was like, well, what is everybody talking about? What are some of the news? And I thought, what on earth? So this is at superhero hype, and I have not seen this story yet. New Green Lantern series redefines history of Alan Scott and the JSA. So it's interesting that they still seem obsessed with retconning everything about Green Lantern, particularly Alan Scott. So here it talks about the preview. It's an upcoming uh, backstory for Alan Scott, and it is basically that Scott was actually a closeted gay man. So like, it's not, it's not bad enough that you're retconning it and making it that he was gay. You're actually going to make it more like, Oh no, no, he was gay all along and he was closeted. And yeah, yeah that's what we're going to get here. I kid you not. So he's an unwilling recruit of the JSA, right? So um, I'll give you a hint. The initial JSA, did you really call me back to DC to talk about super squad? The Justice Society of America would never remember. No. Anyway, so basically it's them recruiting him, right? And he's like, no, thank you. I work alone because is that a fact? And he pulls out a file. Literally, this is a uh, J. Edgar Hoover move. Kid you not, right? This is the opening pages. The book's by Tim Sheridan and Sion Tormey. That is basically a propaganda machine for the American war efforts. The JSA, that's what they are now. And the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover is um, happy to uh, blackmail him. And so as you can see, I'm a real believer in photographic evidence. Look at the horror in his eyes. And it's like, um, we're having a little get together in Forest Hills this weekend. You'll come. Clyde will give you the details on your way out. And Alan, bring the combat boots. So there's a photo evidence of him with his gay lover, if they still fit. So, yeah. Um, it, it basically... Um, is just so strange. Um, this is this is the weird like this is I don't I don't see this in here, so I'm just confused. But it says beyond forcing Alan Scott to be part of the JSA, it's also implied that J. Edgar Hoover forced himself on Green Lantern sexually. So we're now retconning that G. L. Alan Scott like and J. Edgar Hoover had a thing like that's what we're doing. Um. Okay. Um, it still says uh, Jager who were sexuality topic of debate among historians. Um, they deny that he was gay. Multiple accounts as he had romance between Hoover and uh, Clyde Tolson. So the comment there is most like it's implying, you know, stuff going on. So uh, yeah, there you go. And anyway, it's just basically um, talking about some different things uh, in this different history um, here, but um, yeah, this is, um, this was just really, really, I, I, I'm really starting to understand why certain creators have just continued to just pound the drum, even though it sounds like the same old thing over and over again, because it starts to feel like a weird mental obsession. Like what is, what is the obsession with DC, their creators? It, think about the pitch. Why is it that Tim Sheridan feels the need? Um, I got a story idea. Let's tell an Alan Scott story. Um, let's have it so that they, the government will blackmail him using his homosexuality to force him into the JSA. That's what we'll do. And we'll imply that he and Hoover hooked up. That's what we'll do. Won't that be good? Who wants to read this? Who is this even for Tim Sheridan? Does Tim Sheridan even want to read this? Is it, is this, is this, um, what is this helping? What is this doing? It, how is this shaping Alan Scott? How is this shaping Green Lantern? How is this shaping the JSA? How is this? What is the benefit of having this very strange fetish story shoehorned into the mythos and the canon? Like it's it's bad enough that you're retconning characters and changing characters and using sexuality as a gimmick because that's what they do. It's like a gimmick to sell comics and to just make them, make them feel good about themselves. Like they've always been there. They're, 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 they're all along, right? That kind of stuff, right? Making themselves into a victim. Like, oh, he's oppressed. 
Um, and it, it's just, I don't know. I, it's not my thing, but I don't mean that like, it's not my thing. I don't like it. I just mean like, I don't, I don't even understand or can relate to why we're doing this. So anyway, that's my take on the Alan Scott thing. Just very, very strange. Very, very strange. So, all right, let's, uh, see what else is in comics. All right, let me uh, let me continue. I stay on the same site. It was just easier to stay there. Um, and I wanted to ask a question to you guys about this. This was um, this was announced. And again, I'm, this is on the next category of does anything excite you anymore? Does anything go, you know, what gets you excited? Whatever. Like I read the Transformers. I thought this is a pretty good book. I had a good time, right? I saw some of the stuff about G.I. Joe and things like that. That kind of got me a little bit excited. Everyone's excited or everyone should be excited about big game. But. Cable's getting a new limited series. And I thought to myself, because this is something I, I thought about here recently. I was going through all the trading cards. And if you guys remember when Cable came on the scene, he was really a big deal. Cable was a big deal. He was top tier. Like if you were listing off like the top characters that people are interested in that are buying and selling and, and they have, then Cable would have been in the top 10. Okay. You know, it's not like it's, you know, it's Wolverine and Spider-Man and, and you know, Venom's always been a big deal. That's kind of like the top notch of stuff that you had went through in the 90s you had this massive surge with things with the hulk and ghost rider and stuff like that but cable is in that conversation and then it seems like cable's just irrelevant now um anyways this is a new four issue limited series um uh, i i never know how to say fabian's last name so i'm not gonna bother um scott eaton's doing the art it launches in january it's the crazy fall of the house of x rise of the powers of x stuff um and it's this final battle for krakoa i don't know um i don't know how i feel about all the stuff with the x titles i don't even know where to jump in because i don't care about all this resurrection stuff i just i hate all of that i can't stand the fact that you don't have stakes and you cheat and keep eliminating your own stakes um so i thought the art was just okay it looks so digitally produced to me i mean i actually thought to myself i mean this literally looks like something that i mean i'm not sure i think i could overlay that yeah that's it's very unimpressive unimpressive cable will wage his own war both against both the orcus and the all-new threat known as necro necrosy on his pivotal mention, he'll team up with one of the few people he can trust himself. It's the return of young Cable as both counterparts race to stop the horrible future from coming to fruition. So their their pitch for Cable is to have a mini series with Cable, who has a young version of himself. So it's Cable and Cable teaming up. Okay, here's the official um, story. The future must not come to pass. All signs are here. The necro necro necrosy 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 neo neocr neocracy neocracy. Let's go to neocracy. Ugh. Um, neocracy is coming, and with it comes not only the end of mutant kind but also humankind. If rescuing young Nate from the ongoing threat of the of Orcus weren't enough, can Cable root out the growing threat and decimate it before the neocracy can take chance hold? already too late to change the future. See, here's the thing that would work. This would work if the mini series actually was the game changer. You know, if they did something like surprising, like they had all this stuff happening and they decided, you know what? None of this is working. Sales are down. We need to bring back some of the essence of the vintage old school X-Men because we're going to roll out this cartoon soon, another sequel thing. I'm not kind of hesitant on X-Men 97, right? But what if we were to um, unplug the stuff we've been doing and just break the system and say, this is what's going to happen and Cable's going to be key to doing it and here it goes. Okay. Might be interested. I don't believe that's it. Uh, here's Fabian. It's always fun to write Cable, challenge him to big physical, emotional conflict. Have written him more than anyone else on the planet. It's also fun to add to that total. Oh, oh. Oh, he's written him more than anyone else. Oh, Fabian, pat yourself on the back. The series finds Nathan Dayspring, Ascani's son. 
Goose in height up against the wall while it lives in the X world of Krakoa under attack. Cable has to focus on the next potential big threat in order to stop the neocracy from be, uh, before it becomes a revolution of a revolution of evolution. Cable needs the help and annoyance of young Cable. Oh my gosh, hijinks! If you are writing a Cable story and you're describing hijinks, hmm. January seventeenth. I jinx cable and irritating young cable. Like we weren't getting nineties cable then. So I guess we're not, I don't, I don't, I, I isn't Marvel in such a worse place than even DC is like, I, I understand. I'm just did a video. We just talked about Alan Scott, right? I got it, but <laughs> they think this is clever. They think this is interesting. I mean, in fact, I've written Cable more than anybody else. Oh, my God. I know Cable. I know what Cable needs to do. He needs to save the day with his younger self. I was like, who? <sighs> How do I get myself into these things, huh? All right. What should we talk about? Let's talk about something else. All right, let's get to something good. That's enough of this modern comic nonsense. It's Halloween. It's October. Let's do something old school. Um, I've been going through some Vault of Horror. Um, it came up because I did my Saturday morning cartoon. Maybe I should put a link in the description. Do I remember to put the link? Okay, 50-50 on the link. Um, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, the little animated cartoon that they did. And um, one of them was based on an adaptation for one of these comics. It's like, oh, man, you know what? And we we're talking. And then there were some comments made. We're talking about the Vault Keeper. We're talking about the Old Witch. I'm like, let me go back and read some of these. So this is issue number 25. I was happy that it was like, uploaded in here. Uh, this is number 14 a reprint. Um, didn't get back issues back then, things like that. Look at that, 1996 uh, with the reprint on it. Um, Look at that. Look at the art, though. Look at that art. That's so great. I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's just um, it's a blast to go back. Um, You can get um, graphic graphic novels and reprints and stuff of all these. Um, And just different. Just it's just so much fun to really kind of get right into um, the old school stuff. Like little, you know, if you if you enjoy like Twilight Zone and Outer Limits and things like that, these are the kind of comics with a little bit of a horror feel to it all. You get a little bit of that. So, um, yeah, I really, really just enjoy uh, all this kind of stuff. So this was one of the things I was reading. Yeah, we quite go do with another issue together. Again, this is the reprint edition, so just make sure you guys know that when you when you're looking at books. And they're, they're, again, you should you might be able to find these even in like cheap bins because it's like you know people didn't really want the reprints, and then it's like you now you can get them in trades and stuff. So like the little floppy, especially if they're readables, they they tend to be pretty cheap. Um, I just love that there's just like no nonsense. Uh, art and storytelling with some of these kinds of things as far as like sexuality and, and you innuendo and horror and death and dismay and stuff like that. I, I just thought all of this stuff just works really, really well uh, in the grand scheme of uh, um, everything. So, and again, like this, like I said, you always get to this, like the crypt of terror thing and you get it. This is look at that. Look at the, oh, look at the art and the detail that's in there. Um, yeah, I really, yes, I just love that. Look at that creature right there. So it was just really fun. I mean, the stories sometimes are, you know, it's, it's again, it's the 1950s, right? So you're dealing with stuff that's a little outdated or whatever, but you also are just dealing with stuff that's kind of, kind of on the edge and it's kind of fun and nice to have some of that. So I did that for a little bit. And I think I've talked about doing this. So I don't know if I have with you guys. So if I repeat myself. It's okay. Bear with me. Yes, I am now coming to um, my stress and, and stuff that I've been talking about and uh, battling a little bit of the uh, sinus junk that comes with that. So I was like, I wonder if there's some Vampirilla or something that I hadn't read, read, read in a while or whatever. And I went, wow, Pops. You're really going to go there, huh? I'm like, yeah, I am, because I don't know that I've ever looked at this. So Dynamite 
put together an art book that I found. So I got it uploaded here. Pulled it up. Yeah, Dynamite put this out. So I don't know about you. You don't get to see this anymore. So Art of Vampirella. Um, uh, this is a look at that Mike Magnolia. Right. Here's some of the different commentary. Joe Josco, Amanda Connor, Kirby's Alan Moore. So some fun stuff. Right. Um, different covers are all sort of like listed here. So that was kind of cool to see because I'm like, there's some of these I've never ever seen um in person. Um and you're like, wow, these are so cool. There's the iconic look, right? Uh, they have a little commentary. Here's some different um, inserts and things. And yeah, it just gets a little on the edge there. Uh, yeah, a little racy. Um, but she's always been a little racy. But I just thought to myself, like, just how much they leaned into their customers. Uh, it just the concept of leaning into what you are, like understanding what you are and not trying to make the audience uh, like what you what you want to be like you know it's just like now it's like guilt tripping people into thinking this is bad or this is toxic and yet um other things are not like you're supposed to just be okay with this other thing I, they want to tell this story and you're something's wrong with you if you don't like it whereas this is the reverse like wait well this is what you guys want right yep it sells all right we'll keep selling so yeah some of this stuff is uh kind of racy for sure um but I also don't think we should just forget it, that it exists, that it's sort of out there. And she's an iconic character. I've always been shocked that someone just hasn't had the guts to just go for it. Someone that's got like, you know, I always say the FU money. Um, but yeah, this is a look at the cosplaying, the actresses, the models all doing their thing. This is some of the great artwork that's done. Um, Jose Gonzalez did this one. This is a piece there. So. Uh, more covers. I was just reminiscing in this art book, just taking me back through time and the evolution and look at the pencil work here on the, uh, on the left and then kind of how it evolves and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's different visions there that against Jose Gonzalez art. So yeah, have more covers. It was fun seeing, um, how much the edition kind of like changed a little bit and they would reuse different things, different th pieces. They would, would kind of like uh, refashion them again. So that was part of it here. So Adam Hughes. Oh my goodness. Now we're going to see some art. Now he's, he has a style that's just very interesting. This is the 92 Harris book. Yeah. Lots of innuendo there. Yeah, indeed. It's a vampirilla and stuff. Look at that one for sure. Yeah, AH. Yeah, you get that AH on there. You know what you're going to get, guys. So, yeah, lots of uh, what some folks want. And uh, I don't think if if we're, if we're not going to talk about it, then we're just conceding the fact that they win. Um, it's not all for me. Like, I'm just, you know, it's not my thing. But it's also something that I'm not going to pretend doesn't exist and shouldn't have a market for because the market's there. And they're just afraid to kind of concede and, and, and do their thing. So Vampirilla does still have books coming out every month. And uh, a lot of folks read it. So, yeah, uh, this was a piece I really liked. I really liked that one. This was um, Vampirilla of Draculon, uh, number three. This is a Ray Lago piece. I like that one a lot. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Um, so it's fun just going through like a history. Look at Julie Bell. Look at that Julie Bell. I'm not sure the face is quite right. I think she's a little too much of herself in there on that one. That's okay. It's her style. That's her how she that's how she rolls for sure. So J, J. Scott Campbell, if you can't tell, obviously J. Scott Campbell. Like he's totally a J. Scott Campbell piece from the 90s. Um, so yeah, you can just pick up on some of the different styles and things like that. So these art books are interesting. It kind of takes you through uh, different takes on the characters and different styles and homage pieces and things like that. So uh, these again shouldn't run very much. These are these tend to not be. Uh, I don't want to say they're not collectible because I think they are, but I think that they don't tend to have like the market um, 
uh, craziness on there. So I realize my name still says aspiring vexologist, which is funny because that is from um, my interview time with Vex. So I will take that out of there. But yeah, that was uh, something you guys should know about. Make sure you check that out. Uh, again, I will try to put some links in. Wouldn't that be nice if I actually followed through and did that? You guys would probably appreciate that, wouldn't you? When I talk about putting links in, I try to remember and I don't because of the gaps in time and things like that happen. So um, it, it's been um, a weird place with comics right now because um, I was kind of cruising along and I was enjoying a lot of different um, things for what they were. Like I wasn't about trying to pretend to you that, you know, Dawn of DC was great, but I was like, Dawn of DC is not terrible. And then they interrupt Dawn of DC and just stop everything. And we're supposed to just kind of pick up where we left off and be okay with it. When in fact, I'm just sort of like, I don't understand. Like, what am I, what am I supposed to do here? Um, and I've just had a hard time sort of like getting back into it. I really, really just be honest with you. I just don't, I don't care about night terrors. I don't think it's going to matter. Didn't think it was going to matter. And just that broke that it broke. It's like a lot of times it's like routines. We talk about these routines and why things uh, don't keep going. That's, and that's what it was for me. So part of it is just me kind of getting back into the routine where things kind of got off kilter. Um, and then with all the personal stuff going on, it's been a lot of distractions lately. So I'll get some guests on here. We'll talk about some stuff. And then I will try to get to that to-do list. I know you guys have got a lot of great recommendations. I've got stuff I've read. Just haven't got like my thoughts put together to even kind of do a conversation about them, things like that. So I apologize for another scattered sort of video of my brain and how things operate. But it's kind of where it is, guys. I wish I could tell you that that was... Uh, it wasn't the case or that I was faking it. It's just, that's, that's, that's who I am. That's what you get. So anyway, guys, thanks for everything. Thanks for supporting me and getting through everything with me. It's been a fun journey. Um, and yes, there's a lot of things in the hopper trying to work through. Um, and I do appreciate you guys very much for watching and hanging out with me so much. So, um, you guys take care. I am pops. My favorite quality about pops is that he's incredibly honest. At least you always know where you stand with Pops. So I like that about him. He's not passive aggressive. He's not sneaky that way. He'll give it to you straight down, straight down both barrels. Hi, sweetie. Like, ah. Gotta have my